Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everybody, this is Rob and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is a very special show. Why, you ask? (laughs) It's our 50th episode. 50 episodes. Can you believe that? So, 50 times. (laughs) I've talked to you for an hour. Can you believe that? That's awesome. So, let's get going. So, what has happened to us in 50 episodes? Well, actually quite a bit. So, I thought maybe I'd just kind of think back on when we first started this show. We didn't know a whole lot about podcasting, so we had a lot of education to get going. So, we had to uh, create a website, and then we had to uh, get it all set up to handle podcasts. And then we had to find out how to get the search engines and the directories to figure out that we were a podcast. And then, of course, during that time, I was actually taking a lot of podcast um, courses so I could kind of figure out what the heck I was supposed to be doing and why I even started a podcast in the first place was like, oh, sound like something to do. (laughs) And it's become quite a show. Thanks to you people that have been listening and we keep watching this show grow and grow and grow and we appreciate that and then we get some great feedback and some good coaching and we just do the best we can so what's been kind of fun is like well we had the show at at first we lived at our apartment then we got moved into the rv and uh, as time goes on you know uh, you have to kind of like all right we gotta work on the audio and the quality and so, for you know, we invested some more funds into really good equipment, recording equipment, um, um, really good microphone, and that really made a big difference. And then learning how to edit this properly and kind of getting our rhythm. And so everybody does a little different. And every once in a while, we get somebody who says, "Why well, listen to this show?" And this, you know, I always, I always, they're the greatest. And it's like, well, good. I, but I don't want to be like them. I want to be our show. So we've tried to make it our own flavor. And we try not to be uh, oriented towards one organization or another so we can be open-minded and uh, can uh, uh, address all kinds of issues, whether good, bad, or indifferent. So 50 episodes. Isn't that awesome? Um, I think one of the big things I do get a kick out of is every once in a while we'll get a note in or something and somebody will say, I'm not sure if I agree with your stand. It's like, well, that really wasn't a stand. It was just an opinion or a report. (laughs) It's like we try to stay kind of neutral and all this stuff. Uh, It's so easy to get caught up in that. And I I know it would be kind of fun if I took one stand and everybody could get mad at me and uh, all that stuff. But it's just not worth it. And it gets kind of ugly. And we just want a really good community. And I think we have one. We have some great listeners that send us great notes and give us great ideas and then they add on to what we reported and uh, like our last show we had some great feedback about the two traveling nurses we reported about they were really fun the interview they did a great interview a nice young couple that really has their act together for having the ideal setup to be an RVer the funny thing is is they don't consider themselves RVers they (laughs) That just blew my mind. Yeah, we're all sitting here going, yeah, join the RV world and freedom and all that stuff. And they're just going, what? We're in an RV. What's the big deal? They don't follow any of this stuff. And I I just loved it. So, And that's the majority. I'm telling you, that's what it's like. Is, you know, all of us think it's the, you know, 10% of us that are out there making podcasts and videos and stuff. And it's not. Go to any RV park and ask them how many are actually either watching or <laughs> watching. Well, a lot of them watch us, but they don't know it's us. Um, but uh, 
really go find out how many people are making blogs and uh, and videos and stuff and it's not very many so really uh pay attention to them because they're the real world <laughs> and i i'm trying to stay in a real world but it gets kind of crazy sometimes but anyway uh keep that in mind when you're listening to all these shows that uh there's no uh, right or wrong way to do some of the stuff you just find out what works for you Well, if you guys have been watching some of our videos, you probably have heard or gotten the idea that Rob and Sherry on RV Travel Quest have uh, uh, are learning to sail, and we've talked about that before. So what I thought I'd do is just kind of tell you where we're going with that. So RVing is always there, and it's always going to be, and we certainly don't want to try to do any of this from a home or apartment because we'd be locked in we don't know what we're going to do because that's the beauty of our being so it's a combination of something we're looking into don't know where we're going to go with it because you know there's a cost and and logistics and all that stuff but so we got to take our lessons we passed with flying colors sherry beat me by one point by the way on the test so i'll never hear the end of it so anyway just get, I mean, she got 98%, I got 97 And so, <laughs> she, I got to hear that. I mean, I got to live with that. So don't give me a hard time about it, because I already got my wife to say, just remember who got the highest on the test. So anyway, so we got that. So then we're asking ourselves, all right, we did all that in 120 degree weather, by the way. And uh, didn't get any heat stroke, came close, it seemed like. But anyway, we got through that, passed it. And so it was a lot of work. I mean, just like, you're... you're um, attacking all the whole time or driving that's either crossing the wind from your backside or front side and it's a lot of work changing your sails uh, using the sheets to uh, adjust your sails and, and you're just working all day just go 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 and there's no sitting back and just soaking it in so that's one thing sherry and i noticed right away so so we go through all this and realize that Okay, we passed this. It was kind of fun, but very busy. But it's like, we don't know yet if we like sailing. <laughs> I mean, we like boating, but we don't know if we like sailing because we were, that was not, that was a school that was busy. So here's the new plan. Not this weekend. Um, well, the, uh, I guess it'd be the weekend. Anyway, <laughs> the weekend coming up of this show, <laughs> we're going to San Diego. And so we made reservations over the Sheraton at San Diego. And we're going to go out in a uh, uh, sailing tour with, uh, we made some arrangements to work with a, a, a captain and a company that is uh, going, you know, it's a hands-on kind of thing. So we will be steering, helping adjust the sails and stuff. But he's really going to be in charge. And, and it's got a lunch and it's kind of, you know, it's it's not a cheap thing, but it's not very expensive that either but it's uh about four hours out and you go out of the bay and actually go out and do a little sightseeing in a sailboat and so and then cinder we got her i actually i'm putting cinder in a really high class um, kennel this time this is one of those uh, resorts so uh cinder and in fact we can even watch cinder on a webcam <laughs> so cinder's got a really awesome place to stay here in uh, Arizona while we go check out sailing. So the mission is to find out if we really like sailing. And so the best way to do that is first we want to get out to the ocean because we actually got our certification out, out on a large reservoir. And just soak it in and see is like, is this enjoyable or not? Is it too slow a pace for me and Sherry? Maybe it is. So, um, that's kind of what we're up to and uh, uh, being cautious before we dive into purchasing anything, all that stuff. But we also have given the word out to uh, uh, a few folks that were kind of scoping it out. I tend to, uh, and I've been in the boat thing for many years, if we consider going that route, uh, I'd wait till the fall anyway because... <laughs> This time of year when it's summer, uh, people are all going crazy with boats. And some people 
uh, and boats go up for sale and they, they're kind of top dollar. So what you do is you wait till fall or winter when it's hopeless and they can't seem to sell their boats and you can kind of get some pretty good deals. So uh, that's kind of what we, uh, that's the only way to buy a boat is wait till they're starving. And, and it's not very many buyers out there. Buyers aren't that interested in buying boats sometimes in the fall or winter. In our case, if we were going to sail cruiser, and we're talking blue water type of setup, we would actually want to get something in the fall or winter to allow us to upgrade it and get it to performance uh, by summertime. And then if we were doing any cruising, the big debate would be, do we go south or do we go north? Uh, north would be towards the Washington grounds where we grew up. South would be another country. And it, that would be quite the adventure. So, who knows? That's just dreaming. This is just kind of thinking out loud. And, and, and the reason I'm sharing this with is we want you to be that kind of dreamer. Don't be afraid to put your ideas out there. If they don't come true, who cares? At least you're dreaming. You're trying to break your paradigms. Looking at paradigm shifting of a, a new lifestyle. Um, you know, we're not getting any younger and sure. And I have to move kind of faster than say, if I was younger, cause we're not young anymore. We got to, uh, you know, we still have our health and we still can do a few things. Um, the other thing that's on the, um, agenda is, um, going hot air ballooning. <laughs> it's a bucket list thing. I don't even like heights and I still want to do it. And so I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but sure seems like something I got to do. I'm, I'm sure you guys will enjoy the videos as you hear me crying in the background. We're going to die. <laughs> it's too high up. My wife just loves it going, shut up, Rob. Hang over. Look over to the side, Rob. Yeah, right. So uh, anyway, the point is, is RVing uh, is part of this tool, part of this growing, part of these activities. And so you sometimes will say, well, what's he going to do? talk about sailing and this is rv talk radio and they are related i tell and i've said this over and over again that rv freedom is one as i've told you is trying to get out of debt and things like that but also you're mobile and especially if you're a young adult like these um uh, traveling nurses we met the rv has opened their world up to affordability and to be able to move around to the different places to support their jobs. And they make good money, by the way. We found that out. And, and I'm not going to tell you their numbers, but they're, you know, they're like contract workers. So they make good, good dough. The problem is, is when they're going from state to state and had to get apartments and stuff, they get ripped off by paying higher rent than most people because they didn't want to, can't do a one-year lease. And, and so, anyway, the, once they discovered the RV uh, to live in and uh, be mobile in, it really put the numbers together nicely for them. And they're a very active couple. And so, once again, the RV has put them in a place of doing an activity or a career that uh, works for not only them, but many other people. And as we get into our retirement age, like Sherry and I, it opens up the door to new things. I mean, we could easily talk about RV tips all day, um, but I think we want to reach out saying, okay, the RV, yes, we have RV tips, and we will tell you about the things we're doing, and I want to talk about one thing, by the way. Um, but at the same time, I want you to enjoy and embrace RVing as opening up your world to things you've never had to do, uh, had a chance to do before. Um, in our case, and you want to put it this way, it could be a bucket list, things you might want to do. And in order to do them, instead of paying big bucks all the time for motels and hotels, uh, your RV can be a wonderful tool to get you to these different places. So, <laughs> that's all I got to say about that, and I'm sticking to it. All right, I got to talk about some other things. Hold on, let's change. Now, the next thing I need to talk to you about is the same subject again in another modification, which is these air conditioners in this hot weather. So we did actually have a brownout the other day. 
uh, actually had to turn on the generator for a couple of minutes just to compensate to keep the RV cool. It was the evening. And, I mean, all heck broke loose here on our row here, and luckily we were all really good friends. And some education came along that I overlooked that I needed to address. So, um, how to explain this. So, the RV is on a 50-amp circuit breaker. So if that circuit breaker pops, which has nothing to do with this brownout, by the way, but it, 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 I did pop the circuit breaker the other day. I had all three air conditioners on, and then uh, I think I probably had the coffee pot running, and I turned on the microwave, and kaput, it went down. And we're talking, when you're at 110 degrees, this RV will warm up quick, and our pets are in here. So reality i get i reflipped the circuit breaker and everything came back on and all was good in the world however i'm going you know what that could happen when it really gets higher these uh, air conditioners are working and um if you're on a 30 amp i've noticed those guys pop their uh, circuit breakers really easy whether it's the internal one or the one on the pole so i went out and and my neighbor's done it too uh went out and got a a uh, heavier gauged wire, uh, 12 gauge is what I'm using, um, and the portable air conditioner is, I ran, the, uh, since I already have a pipe going out to the window, I ran a separate wire directly to that portable to the pole on a separate or a different circuit breaker on the 110. And so if I pop the uh, 50 amp, the 110 is still engaged. So a little bit more peace of mind that if I pop that puppy, at least we still have the portable keeping the uh, RV cooled the best it can if our pets were in here and we're gone for today. So get, you see what I'm coming from here? So it's a backup. And uh, um, luckily, I mean, it, it, I can't... Uh, express this enough to people that this and i know it's i mean arizona it's hot here i'm telling you we're at 110 almost every day here for this week and um plus or minus two degrees who cares at that rate and i i know the other states are starting to get warm too you guys got the humidity too so you probably got the other problem of keeping dampness out of it so you might want to get a dehumidifier running in your rv too and if you have a big one of those running uh um, then these portables, by the way, also have dehumidifiers built into them. Once again, you might want to run those on a separate circuit outside of the RV uh, because you got two circuits, by the way. You got the one at the pole and you got your own internal circuit breakers and two opportunities to pop those. And so with me hooking this directly, it's only one opportunity to pop, but there's still, you got to have something for safety. But anyway, Really analyze your cooling system situation, and especially if you have pets. And I know you guys, Rob, you talk about your pets all the time. And it's like, I know a lot of you guys have pets too. And how would you feel you came back and found your pets just about dying because the air conditioning system went down? And here... We can't drive around with our pets in the car and leave them in the car because they will die there too. So it's hard. And, uh, you know, not to mention kids and things like that too. And then if you're older and stuff, you can't handle this hot weather very well. So we have to stay cool. Anyway, keep that in mind, guys, when you're setting up your cooling systems is, is your circuit set up the way it could and what happens if... There's a problem. Anyway, I hope that's good advice to pass on. Please take a look at your system. After 50 episodes, you know, you can't help but kind of start looking back. And, I, and, and of course, we actually listened to older episodes, which was kind of fun because you kind of like, all right, he doesn't have his uh, <laughs> process down yet. But, you know, I really hope, and I hope that continues this way, that you get from our show a positive but practical look at life 
as in general, as you know, folks like us are getting to that cusp of being called seniors, but we're not, uh, and realize that uh, you know we don't sit here and say, "Come on out, live the RV dream." And, and you ever notice whenever I get on this show, I always get imed. Anyway, so that's my phone in the background. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so my goal and Sherry's goal is to, first of all, always try to have a positive outlook on life because there's plenty of things that you don't hear about, you know, the days you don't feel good and times that, you know, um, uh, we're trying to coordinate doing activities and and things break and all that stuff. And, and there's plenty of that negativity out there. And it seems like people want us to do shows like that. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I get on the microphone, I get ironed. I No, I should turn it down, but it's like, that would be fun. That would, then you wouldn't know I was real over here. Anyway, so uh, getting back to the subject, I'm going to stay with that kind of philosophy of far, or as far as being positive, being assertive when we can be, and uh, keeping things in reality. Because I do see a lot of these videos and shows coming out that are just like, this is the life, woohoo, and stuff. And it's like, hey, and that's great. And we feel that way too. But we also know everybody's life is different. And yours is not going to be like ours. And some people, they may be uh, veterans and they may have a different kind of, may have retired as, uh, have an extra pension, or things like that, or not at all. Some people uh, have divorces and deaths in the family and things are all different for everybody. So the only thing that I feel that Sherry and I could pass on is the benefits that might help fit some of those categories. And... When and and you hear Sherry and I talk about, oh, we're gonna go sailing or learn how to. That, that may not be for you. Yours might be hiking and might be going to see all the different national parks, which is awesome, and and it's all different. So I don't expect yours to be the same as ours. Um, uh, we have a um, a mariner background, so that's our interest. We like that stuff. Um, and other people, they just love to explore and hike, and and that's awesome. And that. It means the same thing. So if we talk about sailing, you may want to play a lot to your hiking. Or maybe you like to collect things. Or maybe you are uh, uh, like to, uh, I don't know what the proper word is, maybe you like mining, uh, gold panning and things like that, or getting agates, uh, stuff like that. Um, or collecting rocks or jewelry and going out and getting your own materials. So... Anyway, so the ultimate goal is, and I, I, I'm hoping you agree, and, I, and this is where we always like to hear your feedback, is we're going to stay with this positive things, but we're going to stay with the realities of this. And, and you've heard us say it before, this may not be for you. Um, but if it is, here's the benefits. And weigh it out and find out if it meets your um, you know some people are like I don't want to mess with a truck and I don't want to mess with a trailer and I don't want to drive one of those big old monsters and stuff and that's okay and then some people are just content being home in their you know, beautiful little home and taking care of their gardens and stuff and it's that's okay because if everybody did what we we're doing it'd be really crowded out here so we understand that too but we, if we bring happiness to you in a couple of chuckles, that's fun too. And so, if you're living, if and it sound, I don't want this to sound bad, but if you're living your life through us, as far as our adventures and 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 and, and chuckles, great. I'm so glad you're here with us, and that's what we're all about. At the same time, um, if you decide to take that little leap forward, you can contact us anytime, and we can help. Uh, you know, we have some folks that we have caught up with and gave advice to, and and uh, we we never say you gotta do it this way. You find the best that's for you. But anyway, uh, very open-minded. Try not to be one-sided, and try not to be um, like we're preaching that this is the only lifestyle to give you the freedom you want in life. Not true. We really want you to be happy and fulfilled with your lives, and and if RVing is part of that, that's awesome. 
and there's a lot of great people out there, and uh, hopefully we're one of them, and, and that are doing really good jobs at, at helping people along with that. Uh, you'll find with us is we don't do a whole lot of RV tips, even though I just did one, um, because there's so many other folks doing that too, and they're doing a really good job at it. <clears throat> and there's some, uh, you may be interested in, in solar and things like that, and uh, by the way, if you really want to know good solar production systems, I've discovered that this, these cruisers, these sailboat people that cruise to these different areas, they rely on their solar more so than RVers do. So if you really watch some, and, I, and there's one out there we really, really suggest you watch, they're called uh, uh, SV Delos. And they, uh, they're young folks out there, and they've been sailing out there for about six years. Do a great show. But uh, they uh, have what they call a power-hungry 53-foot um, sailboat that they're out on. And so they've got to produce their power and water. So, holy moly, if you think you've seen some of these RVers setting up their solar to be self-reliant, Think about being on a sailboat and maybe you're doing a crossing and you're out there for 23 days. You've got to keep them batteries up. You got uh, they, they have generators too, but they're really limited on space. And, and, and fuel is a big thing. And you got to be, and they also produce or create their own water. They have what's called water makers. So, boy, if you want to see boondocking at its best, go check out a sailboat uh, cruiser. Those guys, uh, they put us to shame. So, uh, and and not to mention, they got to deal with water and corrosion. So, if you need some real good education about how systems last and and are proficient, check out some of those shows. Anyway, uh, <laughs> getting back on track here. Um, so, back to celebrating the fact that we're fifty episodes. Woohoo! Happy birthday to us. I don't know if that's a birthday. I guess if I said 56 um, episodes, I could say happy one-year anniversary. But uh, the episodes are funner. Anyway, uh, so uh, I guess I can't celebrate till 75 now, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's see, 50. Man, if I do wait till 100, then that won't be till like next summer. Well, next spring. I don't think I could wait that long before I could party. Anyway, um, we're going to stay the course. Uh, if you have any suggestions or things you'd like to see us add to the show, let me know. Uh, we really uh, uh, are open-minded to things that you'd like us to do. We've actually done a few things. Uh, like We've done some reports, and I've grabbed stuff off the Internet and read some RV news. And it's like, oh, that doesn't sound like us. And so we kind of keep it more personal. And some people say, well, all you do is talk about you. And it's like, well, yeah, because it is us, <laughs> Sherry and I. And so this is our show. And, yes, we will talk about us and the people we meet. Uh, and, by the way, there's, I, I hope you never get the impression that anybody's doing videos or shows out there. We salute to all of them. It's a lot of hard work. Everybody has their own system and their own uh, way of doing it, and uh, all all the different ones are effective. It's just you got to pick the ones that fit you, um, that you like to uh, listen to. So us, we just like to be playful, realistic, and down to earth. <laughs> I, mean, I hope we're down to earth. Anyway, let's move on to a new subject. I have an observation I want to pass on that I don't know if this is good or not, and, and some people uh, I, might get, I don't know, been out of shape from this a little bit, but it's been really hard, and uh, <laughs> I knew as soon as I got on the microphone again, I'd get an I'm. Anyway, it's really hard to find people that are spontaneous. And I know you say, what are you talking about? And and I think that's part of our being sp spontaneous. I'm telling you, I'm going to kill this phone. Anyway, stop. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'll turn it down eventually. So you got to look at the humor of it. So 
spontaneous. So I met, we met this couple, which are the traveling nurses in their 30, 35 age group. And I love them because out of the blue, they'll just knock on the door and say, Hey, we're going over here for dinner. You want to go? And we might be in the middle of dinner and go, all right, put it away. We're going. <laughs> and, and it, we've done the same to them. We're sitting out in the dog park and they come home. And I see them, and I and we hadn't gone to dinner yet, so I eyed them real quick. I said, hey, sushi? You want to go to sushi? And one of them walked over with Oscar, their little dog, and uh, she says, oh, we just got back from the Mexican. I go, oh, man. It's like, we're going to see if you want to go to sushi. So we're out there talking and all that, and then our, her husband, Chad, comes over, and uh, she goes, did you, did you say sushi? <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, I said, you can always talk me into going to sushi. I said, it's been long enough that we'll go with you. <laughs> so even after they had dinner, they still went to sushi with us. They only got one roll. And uh, and we enjoyed a weird beer that he had me drink, and it was actually not too bad. And uh, I think it was called Sororo or something like that. Anyway, it's not too bad a beer. But And then we it's been going like that ever since we met them. They're very spontaneous they will drop things and change to another gear very easily and that's hard to do for some people like i had friends that i grew up with and and, and it just drove me crazy it's like we never get a chance to meet for coffee well i don't know how many times i've called them up and said hey you want to meet for coffee oh, i can't i gotta do this and this and this and and all that and it's like and then i don't think what's her face is gonna let me do it and and it's like, really? You're you're pitiful. And so I keep trying a few times with folks like that. And yet they still have the nerve to say, how can we never get a chance to meet for coffee? We're going to have to meet for coffee someday. And it's like, I've invited you like 10 times and you keep finding reasons why you can't because of your so-called busy life. And so anyway, uh, so my question to you is how spontaneous are you? And that's what's really cool about RVing because when you go all these different places, there's always different opportunities to do things you've never done before. And uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why Sherry and I are kind of like looking at sailing because wherever sailing takes us will also put us uh, in situations to try some new stuff, even if we're reluctant. And uh, and, and the reason I want to say reluctant is, is to build on from that because I've had to make some changes in my life that... Um, I've been a little stubborn about and, uh, well, maybe a lot stubborn about, and, and I'm still trying to get into that. So I'm kind of an old fuddy duddy. I, I was brought up by a father of kind of being formal and all that stuff. So I'm a little fighting some of that in the subconscious paradigm part of my life and little things like sandals, <laughs> you know, this is little things, but you think you could ever get sandals on me, especially if I was living up in Washington, it's like it's like, really? Sandals? So, finally, I've bought some, and I can't get them off. I just love them. <laughs> of course, there's sandals with socks on, and occasionally I'll wear without socks. But, you know, Washingtonians, we wear our sandals with socks. And, of course, I'm in Arizona. It's like, why are you wearing socks? <laughs> it's like 110 degrees out here. So, the only thing Sherry and I got to be kind of be careful about is... uh. Uh, we can't get exposed too much to the sun too quickly because, first of all, we're from Washington and we glow in the dark. And, uh, uh, you know, we want to protect our skins and, and we're at an age, too. I also want to be careful of skin cancers and stuff like that. So we're being cautious. Uh, but that and swimming pools. I've never enjoyed swimming. Swimming, to me, is just kind of... Uh, you learn how to do it because we were always on boats when we were little and stuff. Our parents, you know, I've always been able to swim kids can swim and uh sure you can swim fine and stuff but i don't enjoy swimming swimming is anyway but that's starting to change i'm starting to find that the pool is uh, especially lately has been kind of a refreshing thing to go do in the evenings here at a uh, uh, rv park and kind of like all right i'll go and yeah, not as reluctant as i used to be so, I mean, at any age, I can just tell you that we all grow and change and it might be a little harder for us older folks to change because we're just stuck in our ways. But uh, uh, 
I, I would say sometimes we're just slower at it and stubborn. There's a lot of things still like um, I, I I don't wear long sleeve shirts anymore. I'll tell you that for sure. And I I was a, a average person of always having long sleeve shirts on and stuff. But um, um, the only thing that I'm not good at yet, and I still oh I, I guess I got to start doing it more is wearing shorts. It's like I wouldn't, and, and you want, I wouldn't even let my kids wear shorts to, to school. I just think it was inappropriate. Never did I ever let my kids wear shorts to school. Ever, ever. I know I'm cruel. I know it, but oh well. But anyway, so now getting back to Sherry and I learning our new habits here. Um, starting to sound a little more. Uh, I like you know I get some kind of fuddy duddy kind of shorts and stuff. But uh, anyway, so we're slowly changing. But the big subject of the whole thing is is being open-minded to uh, uh, try new things and to not be so stubborn to be always planning yourself so much that you can't enjoy life. And whenever we do these uh, spontaneous things, Sherry and I always have a blast. And yes, we get back and we go, you know, we're supposed to do laundry tonight. Who cares? Or we're supposed to do something like uh, go to the store and pick up something uh, for the RV. Didn't happen. And we're just like, oh, well, we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> so I don't know how what I'm asking you to do, but are you spontaneous? Would you like to be? Uh, I don't know if I can help you with that at all, but... Being spontaneous can really make your life fun and exciting. And I don't care how simple it is, whether you just try to wear something different like sandals like me, dumb little thing I know, or something big like, all right, um, going or like Sherry and I going to San Diego. Uh, scared to death. Never been to San Diego. And we don't really do vacationish type stuff. And then, uh, you know, we don't, we don't like leaving Cinder, so we gave Cinder a great uh, doggy resort to go to. And so, but it's all different, all totally, totally, totally different for me and Sherry. So I'm hoping I can say the word spontaneous. And then you heard me talking about hot air ballooning. Uh, boy, that's <laughs> pushing it for me. But spontaneous, I would like to say in my life that I had the opportunity to do that. So how spontaneous are you? And are you willing to try to be a little more spontaneous? Or are you just you just going to stay the course and you're just happy the way things are? Um, nothing wrong with that either. But anyway, if you can open the door to being spontaneous, it's a nice life. Well, I got to laugh. As we were talking, you heard me going, oh my gosh, I'm getting eyed to death here and stuff. So I have some dialogue going with some folks that I keep in touch with that I retired from at, at the company I left. Anyway, so uh, the one person I was talking to, uh, the reason I kept hearing this bling, 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 he was writing a novel. And the good thing he did, and it's like, I'm doing the show right now. This is a good time to talk about it. So he was saying that they took a ride out to eastern Washington and then over to Idaho. And he used his card for getting gas and turned out that he got to one of those where somebody broke in and got a reader in there and, and stole his credit, uh, credit card number, which happened to be his debit card. And he said that they, uh, and he started getting notifications of transactions that, he, uh, that weren't his in that following Monday, called the bank, and yes, they just had a heyday with his um, debit card. And good thing is the bank uh, took uh, ownership of that real well and got his money back. And so, but he said it was quite the hassle, according to the note I'm reading here. So what he wanted me to pass on to you was when you're traveling and doing stuff like that, even though you may not like it, and I don't like to uh, do it either, is uh, uh, to use your credit card. He's saying, at least with a credit card, it's not tying into your main bank account. It's separate. And so he said, you know, at least he would have been a little bit less stressed if it wasn't the fact 
it was his debit card that got uh, hammered. And uh, uh, you ever had one of those days that everybody wants to talk to you? And uh, my phone's been ringing and I've been going and the whole works. And it's like, I'm just a popular guy today. So, but anyway, it's kind of nice because the information is coming in on his phone. Is the stuff that we should probably talk about on the radio show. And they have no idea I'm doing the show right now. But anyway, uh, uh, there's some really good advice there of traveling. Of uh, while you're traveling from one place to another, maybe when you're getting your fuel and stuff. And that, by the way, that's where the hackers have been famous about finding the way to open up those uh, pumps. And they put in a card reader and then come back a day later. And then uh, they have these transactions that they're able to record. And then they have fun with your credit card. So uh, anyway... Um, maybe not a good idea to be using your debit card. And I, I'm probably the worst of that. I enjoy using my debit card because then I know everything's paid for. But, uh, um, and right now all my credit cards are at zero and I kind of like them that way. But, um, I think that's a good point of, uh, what, to save a lot of stress if that was to happen to you. At least you know that it was only the credit card that was compromised. So, Anyway, good advice, and I want to thank Phil, uh, a friend of mine, uh, for giving me that advice to pass on to you guys. Another uh, thing I'd like to bring up to you is, um, I don't know, it's probably a little deep again, but it's about communication. And, you know, you guys know me and Sherry. We've been, we grew up together as kids, and then we got married at 19 and had kids at 21, and, you know, uh, real leave it to beaver lifestyle. <laughs> and, uh, been married 30 going on 36 years um we celebrate that in august and uh so you keep thinking uh you know as you're married that you got each other figured out <laughs> i have news for you <laughs> not <laughs> so as we kind of get into this new realm of looking at the cruising world we'll just say that i'm going you know what Sherry ain't going to go for that one. There's no way. I mean, uh, and and even, you know, and when I say whether we're going to do it or not, I don't know. But there's certain points where you go, you know, there's just, I'm not even going to pursue this because I don't think your partner is going to, like, go for it. So, especially when it comes to a boat or even living on a boat or cruising, never done it. And, uh, We've always done it in a different way, so we have a different kind of taste in our mouth about what it's like. Anyway, believe it or not, I'm kind of like, uh, I'd love to check this out, but I know Sherry wouldn't go for it. It would be, even be interested. She's dead set about no way. Could, I've heard her say, no way could I think about living on a boat. And no, I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. But the thing is, just a month ago, she goes, you know what? Maybe that's something to look at. And it's like, all right, I'm just going to shoot myself now. Because I don't have this woman figured out at all. I've been married 36 years. And I think I got her pegged. And she surprises me. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> when she said that, I'm like, I want to just dance up and down. Woohoo! Let's go check it out. Because that gives me permission to do all the homework. And, and even if it doesn't come true... I'm a visionary, and when I got a vision in my head, it's like, I got to look at all the scenario, and then thank God I got Sherry around to kind of, like, keep me grounded. But when she says, you know, that's something to consider, <laughs> it's like, wow. And so uh, one of the uh, shows that we watch, and I mentioned it before, is SV Delos. And, uh, boy, she, she's as bad as I am lately about making sure we watch almost every episode that they've done. And I've been monitoring some other folks, too. And uh, um, kind of, like, learning, like, what we might be interested in and stuff. But the big thing I always tell people is if you want things to happen in your life, and especially, like, Law of Attraction, I talk about that a lot, and I have an actual show, uh, Imagine 180, about that, is you... It's one thing to talk about it. It's one thing to do, but you got to take action. And what you're seeing Sherry and I do right now is taking action. We're kind of telling the universe, 
we got a new idea. What do you think? And will the universe line up with our idea? And so you need to, and, and if you know about law of attraction, it's one of those of uh, ask re, um, uh, and receive type thing. Uh, believe and receive is the three main things. So you have to kind of believe in it and 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 you need to ask and you need to take action. You have to env envision what, your, what you want to do in life so the world can kind of say, all right, well, I'll show you the way to get there. And we also have what's called a vision board. And so I know I don't talk about it a lot on this show, but a vision board to me and Sherry is important. We keep a bulletin board up with our ideas and dreams. Not all of them come true, but we actually put a physical picture of what we're thinking about doing up on our bulletin board we call it our vision board and uh, I'm looking at it right now and I have certain things that's personal so I don't have everything up there I'm going to tell you it's up there but uh, uh, we highly recommend it to everybody it's a real positive thing to do is you you need to envision whatever your goals are in life uh, or things you want to do to make them come true. And this is true whether you want to earn more money or you want another car or buy a house or you have something you're envisioning. Um, and and, and uh, keep it in front of you and, and, and constantly think about it. And even if it's a long ways away and maybe it's a car or a house or something, you still walk out and go look at them. Like uh, Sherry and I were looking at RVs for a while. And... Uh, and you have to take action and go look. And, and once we kind of got out there, we're kind of going, you know what? We're kind of happy with what we got already. So we took that vision. It's okay to let some go and pursue other things. And so uh, I can't recommend enough that to take action to uh, whether it's a dream that does or does not come true, to have a positive vision in your head of what, you'd like to do and then get united as a team that, that Sherry and I have done, try to talk it out and, and kind of bring it back out to communication that as hard as it can be to bring up an idea that your wife or husband might go, are you nuts? At least try to get the dialogue going. And sometimes it may not even go good at the first conversation of it and then give them each person a little time to kind of, uh, digest the ideas a little bit and you might be surprised uh, all of a sudden they might go you know what maybe <laughs> maybe you know that's the worst mistake my wife can say is maybe and i go yeah let's go so anyway um but going back to getting a vision uh taking action sure you see sherry and i are taking action to, uh, at, at a vision that we have but doesn't mean we're going to go, but if you don't research it and you get your feet wet and uh, find out if it's something you like to do, just like whether you like, maybe you want to become a pilot. Maybe you've never flown before. Well, maybe you better go out with an instructor for a day and see if you like it. Um, you know, hiking or doing something. Maybe you like, but it's like, I always wanted to kind of see what it was like to go up north and to Alaska or something. Well, take a, you know, uh, a cruise up there first, you know, tippy toe. Anyway, I don't know if that's something you want to hear about or not, but I highly recommend, uh, especially if you study law of attraction, uh, to write down your goals and write down your visions and, and literally make something that you see every day that uh, reminds you of what you're trying to achieve. And with that, picture in your head and with that vision in your head you're also kind of telling the world the universe you're giving out a vibration of, of what you want in life and you'd be surprised and it could be this is kind of a spiritual thing I know but you might be surprised how the world will line up showing you how to achieve that goal and it actually make it easier to get to so anyway there's a little spiritual information for you so <laughs> and communication don't underestimate your partner talk it out as hard as it is talk it out
thank you so much for spending this 50th episode with us. I hope we have another 50 uh, ahead of that and on and on and on. We're doing the best we can. I'm sure that we'll grow and change as time goes on and add new things to the show. It's uh, kind of tough because we're you know juggling all the different things that we're doing right now. And not to mention we have the new out, <laughs> outdoor travel radio. And by the way, these episodes um, actually come out a day or two earlier on that show. We rotate, um, I believe, seven or eight episodes <coughs> Excuse me, um, on the show. And so we play them three times a day. I think one's in the morning, one's at noon, and one's around dinner time at four uh, Pacific. And uh, we play older episodes and we rotate them through. But we do load this show like a day or two early before the Monday show. So that is one of the uh, benefits of watching, uh, listening to Outdoor Travel Radio. And if you go to Outdoor Travel Radio, just go there real quick. There's a little button. You can add it right to your phone and easily play our show anytime you want. So it's kind of fun. Really good music, by the way. Awesome music. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for uh, spending your time with us today. And looking forward to having you with us every week. We always have a show on Monday mornings. And Sherry and I always try to be positive and try to pass on really good stuff for RVing. And also tell you the things we're doing outside of RVing. But thank God the RV got us there. So, once again, don't forget to subscribe, like our shows, watch our videos, tell everybody about us we need you to help us grow and we truly appreciate that anyway guys have a great week thanks for listening be safe out there bye now thank you for watching our videos please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.